Welcome to this week's Power BI for Sports Science tutorial. Have you been looking at trying to find a threshold for your max velocity to see when a player has achieved greater than a percentage? Well, this week I'm going to show you how using a parameter or using a different table to create a dynamic value to look at multiple different percentages. So let's get started. haven't already make sure you hit like and subscribe below and also hit that notification bell icon so you are notified of future videos. So this week we're going to look at a couple of options to dynamically change your percentage of max velocity to see how many exposures an athlete has greater than that percentage. And this is something you might want to do throughout the season to make sure your athlete is reaching close to or near their max velocity. Um, and so you can do it with just using a set value, but we're going to show you how to do that using a uh, dynamically changing value if you want to look at different percentages of their max. So this is a report that I've used previously. Um, it is the training load monitoring report. Uh, you'll find a video of that on my YouTube and you'll see a link up in the uh, top corner. So there's already a few things already in here. So this uh, table here, sorry, this graph here is our max velocities by day. And then uh, the black line is our all-time max velocity. So if we go and look at that measure, you can see here that it's the all-time max velocity searching for an athlete, finding the date, uh, and then filtering um, our training load data to find all of it and then limiting it down to just our athlete and to where a max velocity is less than 11, just in case there's errors. And then it's just finding the max of that. I have removed this line here for the date, and I'll show you why uh, right now. And when you see the date is less than, it will say before this date, his max was only at an 855, but now it's at a 912 based on this day here on the 29th to the 3rd. So by putting these slashes in, uh, that just comments out or removes that line of uh, the code. So for this example, we're going to remove that. Um, and so now what we want to do is want to be able to create a parameter. And I already created one here, but what I'm going to do is just delete it for now. And what we're going to do is we'll go into modeling here at the top and click a new parameter. And we'll use a numeric range. Uh, here you can call it what you like. So I'm going to call it max V percentage. Uh, and we can change this to a decimal number. And what we'll do is we'll just start at, let's go actually at 0.75. The max I'm going to put greater than what I want it to be. And we're going to put our numeric increment at 0.1. What this will do is it will add a slicer to your page and it will add essentially a new table into your fields here. So here you can see max V percentage. So let me just drag this around. And then what I'll do is I'll change this to a drop down. So now we've got a drop down of our values. Do one other thing and then change it to a single select because we only need one value from this. We don't need multiple. So now all we want to do is create a new measure that will first find our uh, a percentage of max threshold that we can use. So I'm going to open tabular editor and here it is here. Uh, I'll go into my training load and just create a new measure and my max velocity folder that I have here. And I'll go uh, call it percent of max velocity. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the all time max. So I'm going to create a var and call it all time. And we'll use that there. And then what we need to do is get the value that's uh, returned from our uh, selector. Um, what we'll find here is that when you create a parameter, it already creates for you a measure so that you can find it. So we'll add that in here and we'll call that uh, percent V. And then all we want to do is return all time, let me spell properly, all time times percent V. And we can just save that. Simple as that. Uh, it's not going to load in for me as it sometimes does. So we'll just click refresh data. And now we have it here. So here's our measure again. So all time, max velocity, percentage V is what we've got selected. And then just return that. So we'll just add that for now uh, to our graph. And so now you can see here, 75% of your max velocity is 6.84. And then you can start to see the exposures that are greater than that here. So what I can do is I can then change it and say, I want to see greater than 90%. So let's click that. 
and our line changes dynamically. So now we have the ability to go and say, were they hitting greater than a certain value? And that might change throughout the year, depending on research or whatever you might read or how you feel about your intuition. Um, or you just want to see anyway, did they get close to 95% at all throughout the year? And you can see here, the only time for this athlete is the time that they had their max at 9.12. There's a couple that are close, but none that are actually over that. So you can adjust it slightly and you can care, all right. They got a gra greater than 90% on a number of occasions. But what we can do here is we do have a value that we'd already set up, which was max velocity exposures. So let's add that here to our fields on max V thresholds, which I've called here. But what we'll do is we'll change this here and we'll call it exposures. And this here it currently is set to being 85%. So now it's going to look for any value for this one that's greater than 85% of your all-time max. But what we can do is we could change this max V here and just call this one our, um, our percent of max velocity. Hit enter. And let's expose that. And now let's just see how many have actually reached greater than. And we can see it's got 30 or three, sorry, have hit more than that. And that's, um, let's have a look at our, our measure again. And so this is only looking in the last 10 days. That's what our mandate thing's asking for us. So let's go and look at this here. If we remove that here, we'll see he's had 23 in all time. So 23 over the whole year or the whole lot of data that you have. But if we just go to the last 10 days based on our data set, he's got three. So we could change this here and we could go to 15 and we'll get a value here that's still the same. Or let me just uh, comment that out for a minute and we're going to go to min date table date. Add that in and he's got 15 across the time for greater than. 80%. Uh, so if we change that now to 90%, he's got seven. Or if we go up to 95, like we said, he's only got the one. So now you have the ability to see, okay, how many times has my athlete uh, achieved more than a percentage of their max velocity, which you can change however you want to see it. This is a great way of monitoring and making sure that your athlete is hitting those max velocities or getting close to their max velocity frequently. Uh, or uh, as required during a session that you have uh, that as a target. This is obviously important for a number of things such as uh, sort of hamstring injury risk and things like that, um, but also just making sure that they are hitting those speeds because they're not always gonna hit them in games. Uh, so getting it in training is always an, a positive thing. So as always, if you've found this video useful, please make sure you hit like and subscribe below. And I look forward to seeing you next time uh, where we continue to power performance through data. Thank you.